Lily Gottfried is here, the 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 daughter of the late great Gilbert Gottfried, a friend of ours, uh, who uh, has made a, a short film, right? The Hidden Talent of Gilbert Gottfried, available today on YouTube or by going to gilbertgottfried.com. Yeah, I did. Um, I made a short documentary about my father because no one knew he was actually like a really talented artist and I wanted like his fans and other people to be inspired by that and know that you can be creative in more than one way. It's weird too. I, I never knew that he had any type of art. Like I didn't know he drew or did any of that stuff. Um, were you surprised with how people saw your dad compared to how he really was? A hundred percent. Like out on the stage, he was very different to how I knew him personally. He was like this sweet dad at home. He was very like shy and quiet. Oh. But the minute he got out on stage, he was like this like super loud guy. Like you would never know. That was the funny part too. I'd see him at the comedy cellar and he'd be at the table just very quiet having a wine and you go, hey Gilbert, oh, oh hi. <laughs> he was just such a different person. Uh, but I didn't know he had artistic ability at all. And the stuff you showed is so interesting. Yeah. But it seems like that's exactly what Gilbert would have drawn. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Like it's a way to like see inside of his mind and like see all of his thoughts like written on paper. Are you like him at all, or is your brother like him? Um, my brother definitely has his more like outgoing personality. I feel like I kind of have like more of a shy personality, but once you get to know me, I kind of open up more, and I think that's with him also. Yeah, I think I even I, I think your dad seemed like he was kind of shy when he was. He had like a persona, right? Like he was yeah. very outgoing with his persona, but the real person was a totally different entity. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've taken like little shuttles to hotels and stuff with him, and he was never loud in the car. But then it's like, you know, on stage, it's like, who is this monster? <laughs> it's a completely different. How old were you when you got to see his, his comedy and got more acquainted with the way so much of the world knew him? I don't know really what age, but I feel like I kind of, like when I was definitely like very young, I would like walk with him on the street and fans would come up to us and I would be like, how are you friends with everyone? Like I thought they were all his friends. Like I wasn't very like open to it, but I guess like as I got older and matured, like my mom would let me come to like some of his comedy shows, but I could only watch it for five minutes until the set got dirty and then she like had to cover my ears. Yeah. Yeah. And then it, it, it is funny though. It's like, I know that he'll be okay for five minutes. And then it just, once it starts going down, it's going to keep going and going and going. Now, do you have any, uh, cause obviously you, you, you kind of, you put this together. This was your idea to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, was it something that you always thought of like, Hey, somebody should talk about this or was it after that he, he passed away? You're like, you know what? I want people to know this. I like never really thought about it before until he passed away, honestly. But like in school we had like a project to create a documentary and that was like automatically the first thing that I thought of in my mind. I don't know how, honestly, because I never thought of it before. Had you ever thought of doing documentaries about anything before or producing things? Um, producing things, yes, but I never really thought I would make a documentary. And how did you like doing it? Um, in the beginning, I didn't really like it because there was so much information I had to tell and it took like a while to put everything together. I had to redo it like three times. It was a lot of effort and I was like about to quit, but like my mom like convinced me that this is like a good idea. Like yeah. this is like about your dad, like all of his fans are going to like it. And that like convinced me more. And in the end, I'm so happy that I did it. Yeah. It's really interesting with him too. I feel like there was like his fans were so rabidly fans of his, but also when people got to know him a little bit more like documentary that came out, right. That, that kind of explained who he was more as a person. You got to see his home life. You got to see him stealing bottles of shampoo from hotels. Like you got to see all this other stuff that you never got from him on stage. It seemed like people just ate that up. So it's not surprising that people are still fascinated by all these different parts of who this person was. Yeah, like there's so much more of him that you can learn. And I think the documentary, like the art documentary, but also like his like documentary about his life gave so much more of an insight to like his home life and who he was like to his family. And by and, and to congratulations too, you won, um, I'm, I'm really getting old and <laughs> blind. Uh, it's an eight minute short and uh, you won the silver medal at the New York Alliance Film Festival. 
and you want and you got an honorable mention at the Student World Impact Film Festival. That's got to feel great to like. It's the first thing you do. It's about something so important to you, and people are like really recognizing it as good. Well, I'm really glad like people like it. Like I feel like that like kind of shows it also. So that makes me happy. What did you redo about? Like, what was something you did the first time that you like? I didn't like how that came out. Um, what made it hard was that I had to put all the information in one like place kind of and it was very like complicated because there was so much stuff I had to put in and like when I finally like sat down and wrote it all out like wrote a storyline and everything it made it easier but at first it was just very complicated like there was a lot of things in my head and you I guess you run out everything you were gonna say and then you said okay I'm gonna show this then uh, did you decide, uh, did you write out the script first or did you like line up all the shots first and go, okay, I'll, I'll do this in reverse? Um, I wrote the script first, but what made it hard at first was I kind of put in all the pictures and everything and then it made it more confusing because I didn't know what I was going to say for each. Right, yeah, you just got a bunch of, you have to talk about one and then all of a sudden it moves and then you're like, yeah. oh, you're still talking yeah. about it and the next one's like, yeah, I would I would have done a terrible job. Yeah. You think so? Uh, yeah, yeah, I would have sucked. I mean, this is actually really good. I saw it, um, your mom sent it to me and it was, it was actually, I was like, this is actually very good. Not that I didn't think it would be good, but you never know what something's going to be. But it was very easy to watch. I was like, oh, I wish it was a little longer, like, which is nice. Are you allowed to uh, go on YouTube and, and search for your dad's like... Uh material radio rants and stuff like that because that's i mean something that i feel like he became really known for is just the roles right the roles that he would go on yeah. if <laughs> there was not when gilbert was in studio it was like once the joke started there was not when he was on fire yeah coming up with another punchline and another punchline and another punchline i mean the best i like really respected that about him like i wish i had i like could do that but I, I guess I have like other ways. Yeah, you. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, your dad was a very unique thinker. Very, yeah. <laughs> just, just shouting the most offensive punchlines. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you actually could do that if you just stood in the subway and screamed at people and yeah, then walked yeah. by. <laughs> Are you creative in any of the, like like? Or, or does your brother? Did, did either one of you want to be performers or or have a, a comedy desire or or acting or anything like that? Um, my brother, like, I think he wanted to, like, go to MIT for a second when he was, like, seven, and then he w wanted to do something with video games, but honestly, I think he could be, like, a really good performer because he's very outgoing, and for me personally, I definitely want to work, like, somewhere in the film industry. Do you know what you want to do? Like, do you, do you, do you want to be in front of the camera or behind it? Like, both. I'm not sure, because I could take acting classes and get better at that, or like for my whole life, I've always liked to like film stuff and direct. So you've been filming stuff since you were like really young. Yeah, yeah. And you're in high school now. Yeah. So what is what is next for you? Like you, you're gonna finish school in a few years and then like what do you wanna do after that? Do you wanna go to college or do you wanna just start working? Yeah, I wanna go to college. So definitely some place that like has a good like film place. Right, like NYU or something. Yeah. You know, in high school, Coop used to Photoshop his report cards. His parents didn't know he was about to fail high school. We just found that out before yeah. you walked in. Did you ever Photoshop your report cards? No. The, yeah. Okay, now you actually just did well. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he also... His uh, parents sent him to the slums of California Oakland. for a year. Oakland. Yeah. Because they didn't trust him to go to college. Oh. So, I'm like, what you're doing now, if you're not giving yourself enough credit, understand, like, that, that you are so far above the bar <laughs> from what we're used to with people your age. It's it's pretty remarkable, you know? So, congrats. And congrats. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> also, we should mention that the, uh, the film is free, but you can donate uh, to, the, I'm going to make sure I say this right, the Gilbert Gottfried uh, Myotonic Dystrophy Type 2 Research Fund. Is that correct? Uh, the hidden talent dot org. So if you want to, you know, uh, help a cause that you know obviously affects a lot of people, um, and that, it's got to feel good, like when when something sad happens or we're grieving, like to be able to do something creative to kind of make sense out of it. I mean, that's a really good thing. I mean, it was definitely my way to like I guess cope with it and understand him more, but I also really wanted like other people to see. That he had all these other talents. Does your brain work the way his worked at all? Like either not necessarily on stage, but as a person off stage? Yeah, I think a hundred percent. Like um he was sometimes like a very person very hard person to talk to. Like I couldn't have like very like 
honest, like, world conversations about him. But I feel like it was kind of like this subconscious thing that I kind of felt like we connected very well. Well, you, I mean, he had a genius brain, and it just, genius brains work yeah. strange. They're not as, yeah. you know what I mean? They're not, okay, they're not amazing at this, but like at that, you know. Like, there's probably nothing you could have told him that he would have thought was crazy either. Yeah. So that, you know, there's the, your mom is the stable, like, you know, let's be honest. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I mean, every family, there's the stable one, and then there's the other one. And, yeah. Did yeah. he ever do his Alan Thicke impression at home? <laughs> Maybe, like, one time. I might have heard it when they were doing, like, the podcast at home. Yeah. Yeah, it was one of my favorites. The, the Alan Thicke, he did Celebrity Wife Swap. Yes, he did. With, yeah. With Alan Thicke's uh, significant other, and he... She didn't like that he kept doing the Alan Thicke impression to her. She found it insulting. Yes. <laughs> I, I mean, I like was there when they were filming it, so I probably heard it when he was at home. Did you know that if your dad found something that uh, that was uh, annoying other people, that he would gladly do it over and over just to kind <laughs> yes, of... Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> and I, I like had that personal experience at home, too. What would annoy times. you that he, that he might do? Was it something, a phrase, or was it something he would... Um, I don't remember, but I... I just remember the fact that if he like said a phrase, we would say like again, again, and then he would just say it over and over again until it, it annoyed my mom so much. Yeah, which was probably after twice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but as kids, kids love redundancy. So when you're a kid, over and over, there's never too many times when you're young. Never, yeah. Plus there's also that thing of he would do it so many times that it's like, it's not funny anymore. But he keeps doing it until okay, it's funny. Again. It's funny yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a shelf life where it, it, it dies, but then it comes back. And right. Then he just plowed right through, it, which was great. Yeah. Now, are are you uh, are you good in school, or is this like the, the the best thing you're doing, or or is it not your thing? Um, like it's been a hard year because I moved like from Florida back to New York, and I'm going to like a new school and everything. So my grades this year definitely weren't at like its peak, but I feel like this was kind of a way to like show my abilities more. But and they weren't like, I have to Photoshop my report card bad. No. Oh, no. All right. Yeah. All right. I just want to make sure. Cause yeah, yeah, you know. yeah. Do you miss, I mean, you probably miss your friends, but do you miss Florida or do you prefer New York? Um, It's, I don't know, because I like New York and like the whole like city life and everything, but it's definitely been like a harder year than last year. And I do miss like my friends from Florida and I liked like being able to just like open the door and walk outside. How hard is it at at 16 to make new friends? Like when you move to a new place, I mean, that's got to be a nightmare. Yeah, Jim was just saying yesterday, you can't make any 16-year-old friends anymore. I know. I'm on TikTok. I do funny dances. They go, you fat boomer. (laughs) But if if you're, yeah, it just seems impossible. Like I I moved once or twice when I was a kid and then never again. But it just, it always sucks going to a new school and meeting new people. Yeah, it's definitely hard because last year I feel like it was kind of easy I was going into ninth grade and like kind of everyone was new so I found like my crew pretty easily but going to a new school where everyone's been there for like years and they all known each other for years it's definitely hard can I ask your opinion as a 16 year old this is a conversation that has been happening around here lately uh Troy is uh well he's going through like a late midlife crisis and He's been in, like, he's found new pop music, you know, and he's coming up with all these ridiculous opinions on music that is really designed for young people. And he's been running around here insisting that Zane is the number two in One Direction. And to Travis and I, this sounds ridiculous, right? Like, it's clearly Niall. But Troy is like up and down insisting it's Zane. Can, I mean, you seem like you'd probably be the authority on this more than any of us. Um, I think I prefer Zane. Wow. There we go. Oh shit! <laughs> wow. She knows what's up. That's that's there real strong. That's real strong. All right. Unpopular I... opinion, but oh, that's oh, that's unpopular though. <laughs> I, I I don't know. I don't listen to One Direction that much, but I do know enough to say that it's sane. Do you not like them because they're a little too childish? Uh, I don't know. Be like I Harry Styles. Other... No. Whoa. <laughs> Like, hot take. How come you I don't mean, like I, him? I don't. I don't hate him. <laughs> no, I just no, no, don't no, no. Listen to him that right, much. Right, right. It's just he's. Who do you? Who are you listening to? Uh, older music. Because you're cool. Yeah. And yeah. also probably because you grew up with all these, 
older influence, like older movies. Do you watch older movies? Did your father ever make you like or ask you yes. to watch older films? I, I watched like a lot of monster old movies. Right? Old Abbott and Costello or yeah. old Lon Chaney <laughs> stuff. Yes, yes, yes. It is funny, right? Like yes. someone who's someone who's like forty might not have seen a lot of those things, but because your dad, he just kind of like loved everything before nineteen eighty. Yeah, think. yeah. I liked growing up with that, like having that experience and and like seeing all these like movies and like hearing about all these like like artists and stuff. Like I have a record player and I like went to a store and I just bought like all these like old records. Do you still like old movies or are you kind of done with them? Old movies, not really, but I can I stuck with the the music. Which is like what what music? Uh like, I listen to Radiohead, which isn't really that old, but I like well, that. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's it older than I yeah. think people realize, yeah. Yeah. you know? It is, you know. Yeah, a lot of, like, Beatles and stuff. And then I, like, in the records I got, they're definitely, like, way too old for me to know. But mm. my mom listened to a lot of the music, so she's going to, like, put me on to that. Isn't it crazy how the Beatles, like, I, I can't think of any band that, like, uh, generationally, like, just works for every every I mean, group of young people. Like, I'm sure they're not... It just holds up. They're timeless. They, they really hold up. Like, do 100%. other people in your age group like them, or they look at you like, what are you listening to? No, I think a lot of people definitely like them, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, I can't think of anyone else that... Bob Marley seems to cross over, like, every race. I Bob also, Marley kind of equally crosses over, and the Beatles, it's with the, with the age. I also think that especially now there's so much more exposure to older music where you can find it like when we were growing up like you wouldn't go and buy a cd of like an older band but if it were just online right if we're just on spotify or youtube i guess if it you might just be click easier it. to find it like it's easier to find like radiohead even though it's 30 years old than whatever when we were growing up and, you know stuff from the 60s i'm not gonna go buy the mamas and the papas i just bought the mamas and the papas did you really yeah <laughs> <laughs> you bought on Spotify? Uh, I got a re I got like their album. Record. You bought a record? Yeah. A stupid question. Of course you did. <laughs> <laughs> and you really like it? Yeah. I I haven't listened to it on like my record player, but yeah. But you do you really like it. do you like the sound? Because there's this whole thing now with records where people are like I like the full rich sound. Do you, do you see a difference between that and listening on your phone? Yeah, it's more like clear. I feel like it's more like fake, kind of like too like perfect i guess when it's on your phone mm -hmm. i feel like on a record it kind of gives it more of that like scratchy like richer feeling yeah that that feel that little crackle yeah there's a little crackle that yeah. happens on a record which i hated because i grew up with it there's something tangible about it i guess so yeah and it does have a nice rich sound right but i mean once i got like digital music i'll never go back yeah because yeah. wait till you start having albums skip have any of your records skip where they just keep playing the same thing over and over it drives you crazy I haven't had that happen. Okay, if it does, <laughs> you'll think of this moment if it happens, and you'll go, okay. "Yeah, yeah, your records suck. I hate records." <laughs> um, I also now. Do you have any more festivals that you're entering this in, or like what happens with this now? Because it's it's obviously gotten such a good response. Um, I applied to a bunch, so I guess we'll see what happens. Oh, you have to send it out and see if they're going yeah, to. Yeah. Are you nervous watching it in front? Because I hate watching anything I do, and so does everybody else. But yeah. I hate watching that in front of people. Um, it's a little bit scary, but I guess, like, through my experiences so far, like, being at a film festival, I kind of imagine myself as the audience watching it instead of, like, that I, like, made this film. And I, it makes it easier. Right, because you're just kind of narrating something. It's not like your, your, your jokes or your paintings or your pictures. It's just you're just telling somebody about somebody yeah, else. Yeah. You're, it's by the way, it's a, as we said earlier, it's available on uh, on YouTube uh, right now. If you want to check it out on on Gilbert Gottfried's YouTube channel, um, I know that you also helped him with his social media, which could not have been an easy task. Because uh, Jim, I'm sure you remember that we he was on Zoom with us a few times during the pandemic, but yep. there was there was one time where you guys left him alone to get on Zoom with us, and I mean, the whole show we're on live. The, the whole show was just Gilbert fumbling with his Zoom cameras trying to figure out how to get connected and us watching him going like, no, you're on, you're on, you're on. And he, what do we, what, no, I think, what do we? I don't, I don't see you. And then, then your mom would come in and fix it. And go, oh, okay, here yeah. we go. 
Yeah, it couldn't have been the easiest process to get him involved with technology. Um, he isn't good at technology, which is why I kind of told him what to do and filmed everything and made all the ideas. <laughs> so, like, I think his fans definitely liked it because it was a lot of more, like, modern humor that was popular, like, on TikTok at the time. Like, I got him almost, like, a million followers and really? a ton of likes. So, he was definitely, like, it was very fun for me. Yeah. To do his social media? Yeah, yeah. It's got to be, like, we talked about this before you came in. Like, we're all older, so we didn't grow up with social media. Some of us older than others. Yeah, I would be the oldest person in the room. <laughs> um, but he looks older. He looks, <laughs> which is horrible for him. Um, Fair. Well, um, growing up with social media, like, are you, like, because everybody gets in trouble, are you afraid of, like, what jokes you might make? Or are you really careful about everything you write because you see what happens? Yes and no. I feel like I could be more careful, but in terms of like some of the stuff I put out, I feel like I have like a good judgment. That you're not going to say anything stupid? No. Do you watch what your friends are doing and go like, oh, their life's going to be ruined in a week? Uh, <laughs> maybe sometimes. Just anonymous teens getting canceled. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like you see somebody, right? Like I'll see sometimes a person make a joke and I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, there, there's definitely like a lot of like controversial information that's put out on TikTok. There is, oh, right? Oh yeah. yeah. And you and you're on TikTok. Yeah. Do you uh what do you, what do you post? Do you post jokes? Do you post real life conspiracy theories? Um, not really. Facts, truths. <laughs> <laughs> I guess just like my life on TikTok. Oh. But um for my dad I had definitely more of like the comedy. Like I feel like I could post I no, honestly I feel like I could never post like comedy stuff because it was his whole like personality and like who people knew him as so it was so much easier to make videos for him. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's and it's great to get his content out to an entirely new generation in this way that people are consuming content is incredible. But it's also like it's got to be wild for you cuz like Disney cartoons last forever. Like every yeah, like yeah. when you're every kid still grows up with Disney cartoons. I'll show my kids the same cartoons that I watched. So, like, when you realize that your dad's the parrot in Aladdin, that's not a typical thing for a child to grow no. up with. That had to be a wild experience. I've watched the movie a lot when I was younger, yeah. but I feel like I never really thought that much of it. Because but... he's not screaming like a parrot around the house. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Were you able to make that connection? Like, you knew it was him, but would you hear that and go, oh, that's dad, or would it just be kind of part of the movie? part of the movie yeah it wasn't until i like grew up more and like until people would come up to me and say like oh my god that's your dad like he was like my entire childhood and then it kind of like clicked did you ever see problem child yes he was great Love problem child. Yeah. <laughs> yeah i don't think I was, was that is that macaulay culkin no 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 that's uh john ritter and uh, i don't know what the kid's name was he was mainly famous for problem child oh. but uh yeah it's great gilbert plays the principal do you do you like to see too like you your dad gets so many nice tributes and nobody has a bad thing to say about him like it's very rare for comedians like for no one to have a bad thing to say but no one has anything negative to say about your your father like that's got to make you feel good if you see all these nice tributes and pe the kind of the uh the uh, uh respect people have for your father yeah it makes me really happy it does yeah and I feel like well he's definitely made like a lot of controversial jokes over the years uh -huh. but <laughs> but it, but in the end in the end people think he's like even funnier so there yeah. was a commitment he had to it and there was an odd like he was a very smart guy but there was almost the innocence of it was that you knew he really was just trying to be funny like even yeah, people who got yeah. pissed off at him no one ever thought he was trying to be hurtful. Like, he would just say these things that people would be like, oh, but you just knew, like, that. Ah, all right, I guess that one missed. But everyone, I think, knew that his intention wasn't to be hurtful. Yeah, like, he would kind of, like, go and do his shows, and, and I think there was this one time that he made, like, an offensive joke on stage, and people were booing him, and then he was like, okay, well, this can't get any worse, so he made an even worse joke, <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, like, the whole crowd laughed. Yeah. Because he literally gives you the choice, like, this is how this is going to yes, go. Yes, yes. Yeah. I'm You're, acknowledging that you don't like this. Yeah. It can get worse. Like, he yeah. doesn't really care what other people think, and I, like, respected that about Honestly, him. Honestly, yeah. It, it's so great. And if he did care, he hit it better than anyone I've ever seen. 
you, 100%. Because if they're booing you for something you say that's offensive, he basically gave them a choice. Like, yeah. You're going to continue to boo and I'm going to get worse and worse or, or you're just going to realize <laughs> we're going to have a good time. That yeah. was a great way to handle it because he almost couldn't be offensive the worse he got as he would go on, like the, Sam said, those roles. You'd be like, it's not offensive. It's such a ridiculous thing. You know that he doesn't mean it. Was his uh, reluctancy to spend money and uh, search of value in terms of strictly money, his cheapness, was it ever, uh, <laughs> was it ever embarrassing on like family trips or anything? Uh, no, because I feel like people kind of had that impression. Like growing up, he would always take me to the dollar store and we would like pick out little <laughs> toys together. <laughs> Can you so imagine? It was being definitely, in the it was definitely go, a bonding that, experience. <laughs> <laughs> Gilbert got yeah. in, in the dollar store. Oh, it's you. a basket. <laughs> <laughs> so, would there be times when you guys were out and your mom would have to go, look, no, we can't. We have to. Yeah. What a move, though. Can we go to the toy store? Yeah, let's go to the toy store. It's the dollar store. <laughs> My mom is down to earth, but she definitely isn't that level of cheap. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very, uh, yeah, that's a very, uh, a great summary. That's a, and you're very comfortable, too, because I watched one of your interviews that you, your your mom sent me on when you did some news show. You seem very comfortable talking and, and, and being in front of people and, and discussing something. Uh, is that something that kind of clicked quickly once this came out, or did you kind of always have that? I feel like I kind of always had that. Um, it's kind of like natural for me, I guess. Like, I was definitely nervous before, but the minute like the camera like turned on, I was like fine and comfortable. When I was younger, I was definitely more shy, like in front of the camera and stuff. But I feel like it got better. Plus, you guys did TV already. You, yeah, you did... yeah, I like grew up with it. And you did uh, what was it? The tournament of laughs. Tournament of laughs. You guys were all in that sketch yeah, with yeah. your fought, which was fun, I guess. Yeah, I made up some of the ideas. So. Did you really? Yeah. And he just kind of went with it. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, that's that's nice. Far more wholesome than your tournament of laughs. Yeah, mine was humiliating. It was just embarrassing. A, a character. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> now, have you, and, and have you met most of your dad's friends? Yeah, a lot of them. Like, Jeff Ross is like a really close family. Yeah, he loved your dad. Yeah. And Penn Jillette? Penn Jillette, yeah. He was in my movie, so... Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah, he did. But did he? What? I don't remember what he did. But I did. He, he just did like a. We just had like a little interview on him, and he talked a little bit about my dad because he knew his artwork. Oh, he was aware of it before. Yeah, yeah. So, is this something that you wanted? What, what else would you do a documentary on? If, if like this obviously is doing very well, and people are probably going to say, "Hey, do you want to do anything else? What subject would you want to do?" Um, I feel like his documentary, like his like personal documentary on his life definitely had like a lot of like personal information about him but i feel like i could go like a little bit more in depth about my experience oh okay like so as his kid yeah plus you're older than when the documentary came out so you're you know like you yeah, probably have a grasp yeah. on what you'd want to say yeah yeah i have a perspective of like normal home life right like this kind of essence being the patriarch of the home that's it's interesting i agree yeah well, look, Lily, I mean, it's really, let's give the proper plug here. Um, I want to make sure, I, again, I'm a half blind fool. Let me see. I was going to say, when you were like, I'm going to give the proper plug. I, I know, and I, I realize my arms don't go out any further. <laughs> Stupid fat old man. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, wait, okay, uh, th uh, let me plug this. Uh, the family is also selling, they're selling limited edition prints of Gilbert's original artwork on the website. Now, they're limited to only 300 copies, and it does uh, have a certificate of authenticity uh, signed by Dara, who is, of course, Gilbert's wife. And uh, there's three different pieces. Chico needed the money, fishing, and Mo Larry Curly. They were created when he was a teenager. Wow, a teenager in the 70s and were discovered by Dara when they started dating in 1997. Dara, can we jump, grab you for one second? Um, uh, uh, you and Gilbert... Started dating in the in in the nineties. How did you find his artwork? Did he show it to you as like something he was no. proud of? No, 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 no. I was in his bedroom helping him clean the house because it was a disaster, and I looked under his bed, which was absolutely disgusting, and I found them stored under his bed. How did you guys meet? We met at a Grammy party, 
at Tavern on the Green when the Grammys were in New York in, in 97. And you February 26, 1997. And you Explain kn- the story. Explain the story. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe you could be an interviewer when you get older. <laughs> <laughs> um, by the way, great job, Lily. I'm very Thanks. proud of you. Um, I was at the food table, and Gilbert was invited to the party because he would go anywhere where there was free food so we were in line (laughs) and I dropped the food that they gave me and he picked it up and put it on his plate (laughs) 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 and I looked at him and I thought oh my god who is this weird guy putting my dropped crap food on his plate and he looked lost and he said he was meeting his friends there and he didn't know where they were yet so he came and sat at my table. And was that a line, or was he actually waiting for friends? He was waiting for friends. Okay. Yeah. Right. He's the first man in history to ever meet a woman by picking up her dropped food. <laughs> that's when that's you know it's the first time one. that's yeah. ever happened. That, that's how you know. And what was it about him that you did? You just did you like the way his brain worked when you first met him, or did you like this guy is extremely interesting? Um, to he, I met him, and um, he was he had this like soft, sweet, innocent kind of look to him like puppy dog kind of look like I kind of felt bad for him um <laughs> but he was sweet and then he hit the first date he asked me out two days later and I thought oh this older man's asking me out and blah 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 and I really didn't know much about him at all um and he asked me out I got all dressed up and he asked me out and it was the Moonstruck Diner on 23rd Street and we sat down and we split one rice pudding he was too cheap to buy two <laughs> I guess there's something romantic about splitting a rice pudding and then he walked he walked me home it was very sweet he walked me home and he told me like an hour of turtle jokes and I just thought squid and turtle jokes and I thought this is the most bizarre date I was just it was refreshing. It was refreshing to have someone that didn't care about social norms, that was so odd and different, but sweet and funny. And But imagine that's... his perspective. When you found somebody that will put up with you splitting a dessert and then telling an hour of turtle jokes. <laughs> yeah, he must like have. He, he hit the lottery. <laughs> yeah, he hit the lotto. <laughs> now, Lily, when you're growing up, who, who was the, the disciplinarian in the house? Like, if you, were, if you screwed up, who were you more worried about? My mom, 100%. Oh, yeah. My dad never got mad. He didn't. Like, maybe, like, one time if there was a buildup of, like, my brother fighting, he would, like, get mad. Like, I've probably seen him, like, scream and get mad probably two times in my life. Wow. He didn't. It was s- always my mom. <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't seem like a guy who would hold a grudge. Like, he didn't seem like a guy, if he was angry, that would stay angry for a week. He seemed like a guy that no. would kind of let it go quickly. Yeah, he does. Yeah. We never fought. You didn't, right? Never had a fight. Wow. Never, never fought. If you had conflict, would you just would you be comfortable just talking it out, or how did you deal with it? He wouldn't talk it out. I would talk it out, and then we would make a joke and laugh. Okay. <laughs> but was he a good listener? Yeah. Yeah. Was he a good listener? Yeah. He yeah. listened. Yeah. He didn't say as much, but he listened. No, he, he doesn't say anything. Okay. But what about, okay. the time, what about the time that he forgot that he had a kid? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> when Lily was first born, and I was at the gym, and I called him because he was she was napping, and and I called him. I said, "How's it going?" And he's like, "What do you mean?" I said, "How's it going? Are you at home? You know, how's it going?" Lily's napping. He's like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> 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 I left the house. I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. He, was gone. <laughs> he left. <laughs> He's like, I'll be right home. I'll be right home. <laughs> <laughs> One time, like I said, make sure make sure she goes to sleep, blah, blah, blah. And I go out and I came home and you're like, you know, three years old, whatever, up at like 11 o'clock eating potato chips on the couch with it. Or the time that he, you were crying. Do you know about this story? You were, Maybe. You were crying and he, he just was like, just go to sleep, go to sleep. <laughs> and finally he went and he, he went to check on you and... And I guess he had dropped his glasses in your pajamas. Yes. In your onesies. Yes. Left it. They were in in the leg of your pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> How does that he probably they probably were he, they were on it. He probably didn't notice it. Put them on and just sent you to bed with glasses. <laughs> and then when he let me like draw all over my legs. Oh yeah, he was watching TV and she was sitting on his lap and he wasn't paying attention and she took a pen and drew all over herself and he had no clue. He was watching TV the whole time. Did he ever? Yeah, was he? Was By the he, way, that moment of realization—that's the beauty of it when like. Your wife gets home and goes like she's sitting on your lap, and she's drawing all over her legs. And you, as the guy, have to go, 
Oh. That's oh. exactly oh. what happened. <laughs> like, like, you have to somehow justify it. She is. <laughs> oh. oh uh. So was he... Would, would, you like would he give you advice about things or was he more like you you would just listen to a problem or um like if you if there was something you wanted to know would you be more likely to go to him or your mom um like about what anything in life in school you're having a problem with somebody or you had a crush on somebody or you didn't understand something uh you know a problem um I would go to my mom for like the realistic information and I would go from <laughs> to my dad for like the jokey kind of like funny I just want to hear what he'll say to this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the things he did help you with, like when, when you were studying, you read you read Frankenstein. Oh, yeah, school. he helped me with He got really that excited. He was yeah, really yeah, excited yeah. about that. Was that required reading in school? Yes. That's when you like submit a 200-page book report that was supposed to be three pages <laughs> yeah. long because it gave you way too much information. It was in like eighth grade, and we like had to read it out loud during class, so it was fun. Did, was it funny, or was it just really, really thorough? Thorough. It was thorough? Yeah. Did you like the book? It was complicated. It was really complicated to read. Yeah, it seems like it, right? Yeah. I, I don't think I've ever read it. I mean, I've seen the film, but I've never actually read the book. Did you like the book or ultimately not like it? Uh, Half and half. Yeah, I guess it's kind of cool because it's a monster, but if you're forced to read... Anything you're forced <laughs> to read... I mean, yeah, yeah. It's a monster, but it's still a book. Yeah, so. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of it. I mean, like Dracula is interesting, but you don't want to be forced to read about it. Um, what would you like people to learn from this? Uh, like, if you could pick one thing that people would walk away knowing about your dad. Hmm. Probably that, like, he, ha like, people always have, like, two sides of them. Like, you could be, like, this one, like, really outgoing person, but also have this, like, sort of shy and sweet side to you. So, I guess, like, that, like, with every person, you're going to find, like, multiple things about them that you didn't know from before. And I guess, like, don't have this, like, super, like, like, strong first impression on someone. Right. Cause because there's definitely more you can learn about people. You, you're seeing one side of them, and, uh, yeah, there's a whole other part that most people yeah. don't see. And I guess uh, as we... Uh, I guess our show is ending soon, but you're going to uh, Europe, I think, your mom said? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. What are you going to do there? I'm going on a teen tour to France, Italy, and Switzerland. Oh, awesome. Yeah. You haven't been yet? I've never been to Europe. You got your passport? Yes. No. Okay. No. I, I, I like to make sure. That. You know, you never know. People forget things. Who knows? Yeah, that's it's okay. You don't have to. <laughs> I think. Well, I, I look, I, I, I'm a traveler, so I like to make sure people... Yeah, and a carer. Thank you. Yeah, that's what it is. Thank you very You're much. A carer. Well, Lily, this is uh, was great talking to you, and I really did like this a lot. I saw this, and it's really well done. Uh, GilbertGodfrey.com, TheHiddenTalent.org, or on YouTube, uh, it's it's called The Hidden Talent of Gilbert Godfrey, and uh, you can also go and buy one of those original art uh, uh, prints. Uh, really, really great stuff, and uh, you should Are be very you, proud of you this. Are you Taylor Swift fan? Yeah. You I any? didn't go to her concert, though. Why not? Uh, I don't know. Oh, okay. It's tough to get tickets. It's a hot ticket. Well, I didn't know. Did she try to get tickets and couldn't, or she was ticket? just like, ah? No, I was just like, eh. Oh, okay. She went to see Cigarettes After Sex, yeah, though, right? Yeah. What's that? It's a band. It's cool. She's got oh. amazing she's cool. taste in music. Because oh, she's cool. God. Yeah, I mean, she likes the Beatles. I can't question anything else. I don't know who this is. Yeah, yeah. You got any, any Taylor Swift to put Troy on to? Because he like, just found out about a bunch of her hits What's from your like, favorite song four or five you? years ago. So, like I said, it's a very late midlife crisis. I don't know. I liked a lot of her old songs I like those too yeah did you ever hear but Set It old, Off you ever hear Set It Off what's it called Shake It Off oh sorry yeah <laughs> Shake It Off <laughs> Set It Off <laughs> Queen Latifah movie or something <laughs> Set It Off <laughs> Shake It Off set yeah it off. I like that one Set so. It Off 1989 was a, was a good record right yes yeah. <laughs> how old do you like to go back with Taylor Swift uh, teardrops on a guitar or not quite that old not that old right. but uh, I knew you were trouble <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah see? Like, I liked her a lot when I was, like, younger. I was a big fan of her when I was younger. And Katy Perry. I liked all the pop music. But you're kind of maturing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and your tastes are expanding. Yeah. Troy's going in reverse. Well, yeah. I, like, I, I liked tell. the Beatles before. <laughs> right, and, and now, now I'm going to do Taylor Swift, yeah. and you're just reversed. Who yeah, did you all. play in the car the other day? It was Coldplay, and who are these, a couple of the other ones? Um, I don't remember. <laughs> Coldplay, but... See, Coldplay's That's, another band that we. Would... I got a Pink Floyd record though. Oh. Did you like it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Dark Side of the Moon. Nice. Yeah, one of the biggest selling albums of all time. Good yeah. for you. 
It's awesome. Yeah, most people under the age of 30 don't listen to anything older. Like Young Coop there. What did we mention before that Young Coop wasn't to familiar with? To be fair, with? Coop is... That's not nice. He, Nobody know, he didn't know who Dave Grohl was. I'd say it wasn't true. He did not, and he doesn't know who Tom York is. Us. Doesn't know who Dave Grohl is. Yeah, and that's... he's also. I mean, he's in his, he's in his twenties. He's you know. Yeah. He's older than you, he's, but he's he's. he's, he's <laughs> yeah, you he's, know why that we say that. <laughs> no, no, it's just devolving. <laughs> it devolved from he's stupid to he's dumb to he's an idiot. Like and yeah. over the course I, of I like don't agree with any of that. I don't agree with any of that. I, I no, just, I, no, any no. of it. I agree with one of the three. <laughs> okay. That's what I was looking for. All right, you can go to gilbertgodfrey.com, thehiddentalent.org. Check out this eight-minute short film. It's amazing. Uh, and Lily, it's a it's a great accomplishment. So congratulations! Great job! And Thank yeah, you. congratulations on being uh, so composed at, at at a very young age. It's uh, it's really impressive, and it's great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah.